let's continue on here. We're going to talk about recording methods. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can record behavior. So we're going to look at two general categories. We're going to break it down into three other areas um, in this lecture. Hopefully we'll be pretty quick with this one. Anyway, here we go. So we have continuous recording methods. How do we record behavior in a continuous fashion? Well, it's really simple. We're going to record all instances of the behavior over a given period of time. All right, so if we are going to record behavior in a classroom, we're going to say, all right, in a 50-minute session, whatever it is, all right, so a 50-minute session where we're going to record every time little, I don't know, Bobby jumps out of his seat. Or maybe every single time that um, Ryan talks at a turn. That was coming. Anyway, um, so we're going to record every single instance of, of it. We're not going to break it down. We're just going to be like, it ha this happened, 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 this happened. And that's it. All right. Kind of intense. Kind of a lot of work. Um, but hey, it's functional. It's going to give us a really, really accurate picture of how much the behavior is happening. Or we can do this other really cool thing, which is which which I really like, and there's lots of cool stuff we could do with this. So we break uh, we break a time period up into intervals, right? So we're gonna break a time period, maybe that 50 minute session. We're gonna break it up into two minute intervals or one minute intervals or whatever it may be, and then we're going to um, look at the behavior within the context of those little periods, right? Um, so maybe a few seconds, maybe a couple minutes, whatever it may be, all right? So we're going to divide the period into those segments. We're going to record within each segment. Um, this allows us to get, uh, at, 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 we'll get into it. Anyway, so here we go. So we're going to, then we're going to look at the occurrence and or the non-occurrence of behavior in each one of those intervals. And we'll be able to make some calculations and uh, make some statements, some general statements about how often behavior is happening. Then we can look at some agreement issues with regard to two people watching the same person and the behavior. And we're gonna talk about inter-observer agreement and we're gonna talk about how that speaks to believability and all that fun stuff. All right, here we go. So partial interval recording, folks. This is one of those interval recording procedures. It's not continuous. So we're gonna break something up into intervals and we're gonna look at behavior, all right? So the behavior in question Question for this particular example is going to be speaking out of turn. I said that. No, I didn't. I did. No, no, no. All of you, stop it. Listen to me. You're in the classroom. Pay attention. So anyway, whew, uh, sorry. I digress. All right. No, I don't. It was really on topic, but it's not because somebody was speaking out of turn. Ah, but they're in my head. No, I can't handle it. See, that's what speaking out of turn is like in a classroom. It's absolutely impossible to manage. Uh, it's really tricky to do that to yourself. Anyway, y'all are going to turn me in. All right. This little line here just shows you when behavior turns on and turns off. It goes, do, 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 do. it's off, right? And it goes up, it goes, whoop, right? So, do, 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 whoop, do, 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 boop. So you get the idea. Behavior's flatlining, there's nothing going on, it goes on, and the behavior maintains for a little while, and it goes off. And it and it's off for a while, and it goes on, and it goes off. And then it, you get the idea. So let's look at this in an interval context. Holy cow, look at that. We have behaviors across. So this is called partial interval recording. We've made our intervals here. They're in two minute sections. That's pretty easy to see. So we're with two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, what, 14 minutes? One, two, three, yeah. So we were recording behavior for about 14 minutes and we've got, you know, the behavior happened during those intervals at all, four times, right? So we have a continuous type behavior here, right? Uh, meaning it's a, so it's a, it's not a discrete behavior. So maybe it's speaking in a turn. We're not counting the number of words, but just the number of instances that they were speaking at a turn. We saw, some kids speaking out of turn during the first two minutes, but only for the last few seconds of that first two minutes. They spoke out of turn for the entire two minutes in the next interval, and in a little bit of time during the next, uh, the third interval. And in the fifth interval, they only spoke out of turn for a little bit of time. But because it's partial interval, we put an X there in the interval uh, that it happened. It doesn't have to happen for the whole thing, just for a part of it. Partial interval. <laughs> you get it? All right, so four out of the seven intervals, behavior was observed. In other words, 57% of the time, but that's not quite accurate, right? But kind of, not bad. Uh, four intervals out of seven, 57%. Yeah, it's not bad, but behavior really didn't happen that much. It only briefly happened in interval one, three, and five. It happened for all of interval two. So in reality, we probably only have about three minutes of behavior there. So three out of seven is definitely not 57%. So the problem we have with the whole partial interval recording is it uh, overestimates the amount of responding that happens. I don't necessarily find that to be a bad thing. It really depends on the behavior you're working with, right? So if it's overestimating, then you try to reduce that. Again, your, your measure is very sensitive. It's hypersensitive, if you will, okay? So let's look at whole interval. This kind of has the opposite issues, right? So behavior, same thing, speaking at a turn. Look at that same graph. Here we go. Take that in for a moment, folks. Exact same behavior. Exact same amount of time. Exact same number of intervals. Exact same interval length. But now, instead of happening four intervals, it only happened for one. Why? Because we changed our definition. Now we are focusing on 
whole intervals did the behavior happen for the entire interval. One interval out of seven, the behavior was observed for. Okay? Pretty straightforward. You got it? Make much of sense? Guess what this one does? Underestimates behaviors. Do you really think behavior only happened for 14% of the time if you do, you're crazy. It happened for 14% of the intervals using the definition that we have. So this underestimates behavior. So whole interval is a hard thing to achieve. But um, again, if, if the behavior is happening a ton, whole interval is useful. If the behavior is happening just a little bit, partial interval is useful. Um, so it really depends on the behavior as to what methods you're going to use. All right, let's look at another one. This one's kind of cool. Time sampling or momentary time sampling is the one that I like to use. But anyway, there's a couple of different versions of this. Time sampling, we're only going to observe, observe for a brief period of time out of every given amount of time. So in this case, we're going to observe for two minutes out of every hour. How many times did the behavior occur? You know, so on and so forth. We could randomize this so the kids don't predict things or the adults don't predict things, whoever you're working with, right? Or we could do a momentary time sampling where at the end of a given period, we will just look up and see if the behavior happened. Okay, so the 58 minutes and the two minutes are, that's, what, sorry, the graph gets kind of confusing. Um, so anyway, time sampling, we got 60 minutes out of the whole thing. We're only going to record for that first sample, that two minutes, right, in the green section. That's a time sampling procedure. Um, we could do a momentary time sampling where we could say every two minutes we're going to look up and see if the behavior is happening. That's kind of a useful one too. So momentary time sampling or time sampling. So keep that in mind for the exams. I think that's enough for now. We're going to jump into uh, inner observer agreement on the next video.